Just before I bring things to a uh, close, as I personally have to go in and be the one that does vote against the cuts in there in about half an hour's time, can I thank everybody who's come to the uh, rally in the lobby here today? Particularly, can I thank the loudest contingent on the lobby today, Castlewood School! Now the next person I want to thank has been ever so quiet and I, and I do approach this with some trepidation because I grew up with this man and I know what he can do. Fortunately, this one can't fly, so when I go up the stairs in a minute, I'm going to be saying, But, darling Dave, is there anything you want to say? I've promised you a lot of things in public life in the last 40 years. I'm not quite sure I can deliver that one, but anyway. There you go. Alan, thank you for giving us a voice. Let's go. Okay, um, and also just to remind you that we've had today, the, we've had speakers from the Public and Commercial Services Union, the first people in Coventry last July, QCA and BECTA, a thousand jobs that were declared by the new government as uh, service requirements. We had Dave Kersey from Unison who explained that there is an alternative, there is a fight back, and in particular Dave reminded us that on the 26th of March there will be uh, hundreds of thousands of people on the streets of London organising a TUC demonstration. There are coaches going from this city, in some cases there are free coaches going from My Union Unite, going from Unison, from PCS, from the NUT and from the Coventry Against the Cuts. So see us at the end of this uh, lobby today if you'd like to go down on the demonstration on the 26th of, uh, of March. Then we had Jeff Dewhurst who spoke from Unite about the youth workers in Warwickshire and the, f the threat facing all the youth clubs in that uh, county. Then we had Gavin who uh, spoke from Cliftonwood uh, School as one of the examples with the after school clubs, the summer activities, the things which David Cameron says uh, what society is all about and then unfortunately he cuts the grants of this town to allow us to provide those very uh, services. Shame on you Cameron! We heard then from Fareed Noor, who gave us the very graphic explanation of what the big society really means. 13 years of watch delivering employment and other advice in the area of uh, Hillfields. But unless something is done in the next few days, regretfully, from the end of March, that service will be no more. We also heard from Pete McLaren, who brought us uh, solidarity from rugby. And Pete made the important point that we're backing against these cuts. But what are we going to do on May the 4th? If all we presented with is the three big establishment parties telling us that how much, however much they regret it, the cuts is the only thing which can go forward. And even amongst those, the Labour councillors not really disagreeing, or the Labour Party not really disagreeing in the direction of travel of the government, just the speed, just the pace, because all we get from the two heads are, this should have been taken over one and a half or two parliaments, not over four years. Well, frankly, Mr Miliband, frankly, Mr Balls, I don't agree with that. I, I'm with Darrell. I was going to say, I'm with Nick on this, but I didn't get away with that one. I'm with Darrell on this uh, one. Barclays this morning have declared £6 billion of, of profits by one bank. The total amount of money which Coventry and every other council in this country is being asked to cut of your services this month and next month is £6 billion. I say the services of local people in Coventry and all the other towns and cities up and down the country are more important to the fabric of Britain than the shareholders of Barclays getting £6 billion in profit. That was a diversion, because what I was going to say is what Pete was telling us is what do we do on May the 4th if we are only going to be offered the three establishment parties with that similar red diet. I think we have to start now doing what was done 100 years ago when the people who set up the Labour Party looked at the Tories and Liberals and couldn't see a difference. What the people of Kidderminster did 10 years ago when their hospital was closing down and they couldn't see anybody helping them out. They started their own party. They got an MP elected and 16 councillors and they changed the politics of Kidderminster and Worcester. Four or five days ago, a large lead letter in the Guardian 
from Dr. Richard Taylor, that very same MP, invited those people who want to save the National Health Service up and down the country to consider standing in the May elections. The Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition, of which I happen to be the acting chair nationally, set up by the RMT, supported by leading officials in the Fire Brigades Union, PCS, NUT and others, we're issuing a call for hundreds of candidates to consider standing in the May elections. And to discuss all these sort of things, we've got a meeting that starts at 7 o'clock tonight, which the Socialist Party has organised in the Squirrel in New Union Street. You're all be welcome if you want to come along. Our guest speaker is Rob Williams, a former Unite convener of a Ford Stroke Vistian factory in South Wales, who's the, the National Vice Chairman of the National Shop Stewards uh, 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 Network. And Rob will be coming up to speak to us this, uh, this evening. Anyway, that was all I wanted to uh, say, other than about 30 or 40, if you'd like to, would be welcome to come into the gallery and to listen to the debate this afternoon. If you can't listen to the debate live, it is actually on the internet. From 2 o'clock it will be broadcast from the uh, council chamber. And if you can't manage that, but you've still got the internet at home, it's recorded and is available from the council uh, website when you get home uh, this, uh, this evening. So thanks very much to everybody who's turned up. We've got a simple message to say to the councillors to today, all of them. We understand that it's the Tories and the Liberals who have taken this decision in London to take £38 million this year out of Coventry and cause 500 redundancies. We understand they want £140 million off this town over the next four years. We're angry about living in a society that can demand £140 million in services and jobs from Coventry, and yet only a couple of weeks ago, one millionaire's family can buy a flat at the top of Hyde Park number one for £140 million. What sort of society is it that values equally one millionaire having an extra spare home on Park Lane while thousands of people lose their services in this city. In my view, it's a society that's gone past its sell-by date and needs fundamental change. <laughs> so, there's lots of people vying for your attention, wanting to sell your papers, wanting to sign you up to things. Get involved, get discussed, stay with us. This isn't the end of the battle. This is round one. We may lose on points round one in there this afternoon, but we're not disheartened. We're not down. We're going to carry on this campaign. When they come for the first job, and if a union says it's compulsory and they're taking action against it, we must organise support for those union uh, workers. If they come for a service and parents will and say, no, we think we can run it better ourselves rather than they go, we'll help the fundraising, we'll help to protect those services in this city. This battle isn't over. It's round one. There's lots of more rounds to go. Thanks very much for coming. Yay!